The only political group on the right that is winning right now is moms. It's not the GOP congressmen. It's certainly not the GOP senators. Those losers are selling our whole political order down the river, as they made perfectly clear yesterday. We'll get to that in just a minute. Those guys are useless. No. The only political group on the right right now that is scoring wins is moms at school boards. Listen to this. The Berkeley County School District in South Carolina just swore in its new school board members who were elected last week, six of whom were endorsed by the conservative group Moms for Liberty. Within two hours, the new members replaced the board chairman with a solid conservative, fired the district's woke superintendent, fired the district's woke lawyer, banned critical race theory from the curricula, and set up a committee to round up all the idiotic and pornographic books from the school libraries and ban them. Two hours. Imagine what they could do in two weeks, two months, two years, two decades. That's vision. That's courage. That is the right way to wield political power. I only want to know two things. One, when can we send these Moms for Liberty candidates to Washington? And two, where can I donate? I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment yesterday is from Benjamin Waddell, who says, this was a tremendously intelligent and remarkably easy to watch members block. Thank you for bringing on such captivating panelists. Oh yeah, Benjamin, do you enjoy when I bring supermodels on the member block? If you're not a Daily Wire Plus member and you're not getting that member block, you really missed a great one yesterday where we debated uh, why hot women like Pete Davidson. And actually, my real favorite comment from yesterday was not from YouTube. It was from the members block. I forget who said it, but someone said that Pete Davidson looks like a wet cigarette. And that really sounded true to me. That really struck a chord. Uh, So you got to join. You got to become a member. We've got great members block content coming up today as we do every single day. And then it just gives you something to talk about with your friends and your family. And when you want to talk to them, you got to check out Pure Talk. Right now, head on over to puretalk.com, enter code Knowles. There is no reason to pay Verizon, ATT, or T-Mobile over $80 per month for wireless services when you can get the same service on the same network at Pure Talk for half the price. With Pure Talk, you can get talk, text, and data that is just as fast for just $30 per month. Those other guys are making you pay for thousands of retail stores that you don't go to, perks that you don't use, and massive profits to keep their shareholders happy. Pure Talk, on the other hand, wants to keep you happy, which is why they've invested in a U.S.-based customer service team. It's also why they give you so many more data options. Why would they charge you for data that you don't need? I switched to Pure Talk. I love it. I I love supporting veteran-owned U.S.-based companies that have our best interests at heart. It takes less than 10 minutes to make the switch, and you can save a ton of money, as I am saving a ton of money. Go to puretalk.com, enter code Knowles to save 50% off your first month. That is puretalk.com, promo code Knowles for 50% off your first month. Absolutely phenomenal stuff from the Moms for Liberty and the Berkeley County School District in South Carolina. But you're seeing this around the country. There was another mother. She just showed up to a school board meeting in Texas. She showed up to this school board meeting and she just read from a book that is in the school library. Uh, Listener discretion advised, if your kids are listening right now, maybe just skip ahead, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, Listen to the way that the board reacts to the book that is in the school library. What we fill our minds with matters. Consider that as I read this from a current library book. This one couple stumbled into my room and asked if they could use the room anyway with me still in it. They closed the door and started kissing. After a few minutes, the boy's hand went up the girl's shirt and she started protesting. Pretty soon, he took off her bra and started to kiss her breasts. And then he put his hand down her pants and she started moaning. He reached to take off her pants, but she started crying really hard. So he reached for his own. He pulled his pants and underwear down to his knees. Please, Dave, no. But the boy just talked soft to her about how good she looked, and she grabbed his with her hands and started moving it. The boy pushed the girl's head down, and she started to kiss his She was still crying. Finally, she stopped crying because he put his in her mouth 
and I don't think you can cry you. in that position. I ask you why this book thank has you. survived two attempts. Your time is up. To- thank you so much. And there is a, there's a child in our boardroom, so I'd like for you to please stop reading that. <laughs> Did you see the child? Okay. Then your, your time is up. Thank you. So they cut off her microphone so you can't hear her response, but you can hear the people laughing in the audience. She says, excuse me, ma'am, there's a child here. You need to stop reading from the books in our school library. There's a child here. You hear the audience say, yeah, right, that's the point. And the mother's there. She goes, no, I didn't see the child, but that's the point. What are you talking about? Ma'am, that's very pornographic and obscene and not appropriate for children. Stop reading the books that we put in our libraries out loud. Don't read the books that we're teaching your kids. No, the real reason that the school board doesn't want that mother to read the book is not because a child might hear it. It's because the other parents might hear it. And the other parents might realize what insane radicals are running the schools. So this is good stuff. It's good when the parents come out there and expose this stuff. It's good when the handful of people in the conservative media who will break through that kind of mainstream gatekeeper and actually tell you what's really going on. It's good when that happens to expose these things. That can't be the end of the story. The end of the story cannot be, look at how crazy the left is. Wow, they're hypocrites. They, those guys, man, they're bad. They say that they're good, but they're really bad. That can't be the end of the story. The end of the story has to be, yeah, it's bad. We've exposed the problem. We see the problem. After that diagnosis, we need to take action, okay? The, the, the end of the story has to be we elect new school board members and they immediately fly into action, fire the crazy teachers, fire the superintendent, fire the chairman of the school board, kick all of them out and start banning these pornographic books from schools. You have to do stuff. And the libs aren't going to like that. And the libs are going to try to try to convince the conservatives that actually it's not very conservative to actually do anything. This is what happened for the past 20 or so years on the right, is that the libs convinced the the right to adopt this kind of weird libertarian kind of shallow ethos where the conservatives convinced themselves that doing anything in politics is somehow immoral or unprincipled. Well, it would be, you know, if we do anything then that would make us no different from the left. The left, you see, puts a bunch of weird porn in schools. But if we take the weird porn out of schools, we're no different than the left. No, we're totally different. That's the opposite, actually. (laughs) You're saying if we wield political power, we're no different from the left? No, I guess we would be... We would be similar to the left in that we would be actually participating in politics. But we would be the opposite of the left because we would be doing the opposite things. They want to make our country worse. We want to make our country better. They want to peddle falsehood. We want to peddle the truth. We want to reveal the truth and inculcate the truth in the minds, especially of young children. This is why education has become such a flashpoint. Because for years, the conservatives, we threw up our hands. We retreated from the public square. We said, well, you know, I don't, I, you do you, but I don't, I'm out of here, okay? I'm just going to go off to my own little island, and that's not going to work. Because that just gives the political space all over to the left. So now, conservatives have woken up. This occurred during the tr- Trump years. This was really one of the consequences of the new Trumpian approach to politics, which is not really new at all. It's actually a reversion to the old right. It's a reversion to how conservatives rightly understood politics to be until about 20, 25 years ago. And and the moms started showing up to the school boards. And then the moms started electing people. And then the moms are the reason why Glenn Youngkin became the Republican governor of Virginia. And the moms are the reason why Ron DeSantis has been so successful in Florida. And what is one, one of Ron DeSantis' greatest pieces of legislation he's passed? It's the Stop woke act, the stop woke act, which says, no, we are going to have standards. We are going to have norms. We're going to give parents rights in education. We're not going to let these radicals just poison the minds of children. And so now the libs are relying not on the people. The people love the stop woke act. The people hate it when the radicals try to poison our kids' brains with weird race stuff and transgenderism and all the rest of it. So now the left is relying on the judges and the judge, the judges are trying to stop the parents from having a say over their kids' education. This is what a uh, chief U.S. district judge Mark Walker just said as he issued a preliminary injunction to stop 
the Stop Woke Act. Stop Woke, by the way, refers to stop wrongs to our kids and employees. Politicians love a good initialism. They do, or a good acronym. So uh, this is what the judge had to say about it. The judge says that lacking explicit standards to circumscribe enforcement of objectivity, defendants can weaponize this term to further discredit the eight concepts in the marketplace of ideas, which now permits endorsement of only one side of the debate. Accordingly, because this objectivity savings clause commands the entire statute, the IFA, this is another uh, way to refer to the Stop Woke Act as the Individual Freedom Act, is impermissibly vague on its face in violation of the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Let me translate that gobbledygook into English for you. The judge is saying that by, uh, by kicking radicalism and transgenderism and critical race theory and all this nonsense out of our schools, that we're threatening the free marketplace of ideas. Then we'll only have one side of the debates. Now, <laughs> two problems with this. One, would you describe classrooms today as a free marketplace of ideas where all sides are heard and well represented? Or would you describe it as an ideological echo chamber where only leftism thrives? Obviously, it's the latter. The idea that there is a free marketplace of ideas in our classrooms today is completely preposterous. I, I don't think I need to explain myself. You've all seen the videos of me and other people going to classrooms all around the country. You've been to school yourself. Your kids have been to school. You understand what this means. But second of all, even if there were such a thing as a free marketplace of ideas in classrooms, there really shouldn't be, certainly not in elementary schools or middle schools. Do you really believe a fourth grade classroom is supposed to be a free marketplace of ideas where new scientific discoveries are being made? Of course not. It's a place to learn your ABCs and two plus two equals four and boys are boys and girls are girls. The problem is that these days the kids in the schools are learning that two plus two equals five and that little Johnny actually can be little Jane. Just don't tell your parents, head on down to the guidance counselor and he's going to give you some puberty blockers. That's what's happening. There, of course, there's no free marketplace of ideas. In early education, at the very least, there is coercion to learn a certain set of facts. And if you get those facts wrong in your test, you're going to get a bad grade and flunk out. That's what it really is. The, the, even the justification for a free marketplace of ideas is that, well, that will allow uh, new discoveries to be made and advance the human race. It's a dubious prospect in many in many cases, but let's say even that that were true. Even if it were true, that's not happening in third grade, okay? It's just complete nonsense from the federal judge who is threatened, is feeling threatened that leftism is not going to have its absolute establishment in the elementary schools and throughout education. It's really not good, okay? Because if you want to have a, a good education, if you want to cultivate the very best in you, then you've got to, you've got to put good stuff in. You've got to get good fuel, okay? You've got to get good facts. You've got to get good literature. You've got to get good philosophy. That is going to fuel your mind. Now, when you want to fuel a, a turkey fryer this Thanksgiving, you've got to get a good propane tank. You've got to check out Cinch. Right now, go to cinch.com. Use promo code Knowles. I love Thanksgiving, one of the real Highlights of Thanksgiving is when people bust out that turkey fryer, right? But before you bust out that turkey fryer, you got to call Cinch and get your propane tank exchanged. Cinch is a propane grill tank home delivery service. They deliver propane tanks right to your door. Cinch delivers on your schedule. There is no long-term commitment or subscription required. Plus, delivery is completely contactless. You don't have to be home to receive the delivery. You can track the order on the Cinch app from anywhere. Are you looking to exchange a tank? Cinch handles that whole process for you so you don't have to go to the hardware store or the gas station. You can exchange any brand of tank as long as it is standard grill size. You choose your delivery date and Cinch handles the rest. It is so, so easy. Go to Cinch dot com or download their app to order. New customers can get their first tank exchange for just $10 with promo code Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. Go to cinch.com or download the Cinch app and use promo code Knowles to get your first tank exchange for just $10. That is C-Y-N-C-H dot com. Promo code Knowles. This is a limited time offer. You must live within a Cinch service area to redeem it. That's cinch.com slash offer for details. 
federal judge in Florida stopping Ron DeSantis' Stop Woke Act by claiming it threatens the free marketplace of ideas that doesn't exist, but also saying this. He says, one thing is crystal clear. Both robust intellectual inquiry and democracy require light to thrive. Our professors are critical to a healthy democracy, and the state of Florida's decision to choose which viewpoints are worthy of illumination and which must remain in the shadows has implications for us all. If our priests of democracy are not allowed to shed light on challenging ideas, then democracy will die in darkness. This is a federal judge writing this nonsense. But the First Amendment does not permit the state of Florida to muzzle its university professors, impose its own orthodoxy on viewpoints, of viewpoints, and cast us all into the dark. Hold on. The First Amendment does not permit the state of Florida to impose its own orthodoxy of viewpoints on the priests of democracy, which is how the judge describes the professors. You see, do you see the problem there? The judge is saying that the, the people of Florida, the people as represented by the state, have no right to have their own moral views. They have no right to impose that orthodoxy into the classroom. And by impose, it means set the standards for the community that, that is going to be taught to the children. Instead, the priests of democracy have that exclusive right to impose their orthodoxy. So it's like the people don't have the right to orthodoxy, to, to their beliefs. It's, it's the leftists. They're the only ones with the right to their orthodoxy, which is evil and wrong. I just, anytime someone tells you leftism is not a religion, please quote them Judge Walker's opinion on the Stop Woke Act. He is admitting it is a religion. The professors are the priests of that religion. He then goes on to quote a, a slogan from a left-wing newspaper, the Washington Post. Democracy will die in darkness. I mean, this is really sad stuff. Really sad stuff that a federal judge has the intellect and education that stops at the level of popular newspaper slogans. Really pathetic how far our country has fallen, but an important reminder that this is a religious battle. And I know there's a lot of conservatives who say, I'm not all that religious. I'm sort of agnostic. Oh, come on, enough with the religion talk. I didn't, I didn't start the religion talk, okay? The religion talk is all around politics because all human conflict is theological. It's the left that is imposing the religion talk. The religion of leftism, the priests of which are the professors in the universities and the teachers and all the rest of the apparatchiks in this hierarchy of the church of leftism. And the only way to fight that bad religion is with good religion. Nature abhors a vacuum. Man is fundamentally a religious being, okay? We have ultimate questions that we have to answer that inevitably we are going to grapple with. What is death? What is judgment? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? What am I for? What is the good life? Who made me? What is, what is life? What is, those are questions that will not be answered by history or natural science or, I don't know, chemistry. They can't be answered by those things. Those are questions that ultimately have to be answered by religion. And they will either be answered by false religion, like the religion of Judge Walker here, or by true religion, by Christianity, by the religion that animates and built our entire civilization. And you've got to pick a side. If you stand in the middle of the road, you will be run over by a truck. You're, you're either with God or against God, is what it ultimately comes down to, okay? And I think what the greatest trick the devil ever played is pretending that he doesn't exist. And for a long time, the leftists have pretended that they're just secular. You know, they're just secular. They're, they don't have this religion stuff. That's all hooey from the dark ages or whatever. No, they're admitting it. They're admitting that they have a religion. So you're either going to be part of their religion or you're going to be part of true religion. I advise you to choose wisely. So meanwhile, as the, as the libs awful sort of religion of leftism takes over. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, many so-called conservatives are going along with it. This was so pathetic yesterday. Democrats in Congress just proposed a, uh, a further destruction of the family. The family has been very weakened. It's been weakened for 60 years now. The, the left has done everything it can to weaken the family. Now they're trying to deal a death blow. 
And that would be through something they euphemistically call the Respect for Marriage Act. The Respect for Marriage Act would codify the Obergefell decision, which invents a new definition of marriage, completely contrary to the actual definition of marriage that has prevailed everywhere for all of human history. And uh, it would codify it and go further. It would prohibit businesses from following their conscience, from being Christian or Jewish or Muslim, though as a, as a practical matter, they will only enforce this against Christians. They, th- th- this sort of law would make Jack Phillips and Masterpiece Cake Shop illegal if you don't want to participate in a gay wedding. That, that will be illegal now if you're a business. It's a radical, radical redefinition of the family, which is the fundamental unit of society. So I'm not surprised that the libs peddle this. They hate the family. They hate society. <laughs> and they want to destroy the country. But I am disgusted that conservatives would go along with it. And a dozen of them did. Uh, These are the senators who went along with it. There were a bunch of congressmen in the House when this passed a while ago, and then the senators yesterday went along with it to to advance this legislation beyond the filibuster, which puts it on a fast track to being passed. Roy Blunt, Richard Burr. So Roy Blunt from Missouri, Richard Burr from North Carolina, Shelley Capito from West Virginia, Susan Collins from Maine, Joni Ernst from Iowa, Cynthia Lummis from Wyoming. It's too bad. I actually like her. Uh, but horrible, horrible judgment here. Lisa Murkowski from Alaska, Rob Portman from Ohio, and of course, Mitt Romney from Utah. Absolutely pathetic. So these people, these conservatives can't conserve anything. They can't conserve anything. We joke about how, oh, these conservatives, they can't even conserve the women's bathroom. They can't conserve anything. They can't conserve the basic unit of society. They just are Democrats. They just are liberals. And they're radical liberals. They're they're liberals further to the left of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton in 2011, okay? That's how radical they are. Really, really pathetic. What is marriage? A lot of people just don't understand this anymore. Marriage is the lifelong communion of a husband and his wife for the good of the spouses and for the sake of the generation and education of children. That's what marriage is. Well, why can't two people who love each other just get married? Well, they can, but not all love is the same and not all unions are the same. I love my grandmother. I'm not going to marry my grandmother. I love my friends. I'm not going to marry my friends. I love my coworkers. I'm not going to marry my coworkers. What is marriage? Marriage cannot be redefined because marriage is not merely a social construct or a sort of political contrivance. Marriage is a natural institution. This is defined by Aristotle, defined by St. Thomas Aquinas, as the natural state of man. Man is a pairing creature. We are connubial creatures, even more than political creatures. And we are drawn to propagate the species with our spouse and to help one another. And that's what marriage is. So you cannot redefine it. Sexual difference is at the very heart of marriage. If you don't get that, you don't get anything as a conservative. If you cannot conserve the natural institution, maybe one of the most fundamental aspects of human nature, you can't conserve anything. So why did these people vote for it? Why did they vote for it? I suspect some because they're just absolute disgraceful sellouts like Mitt Romney, but some because they think, well, it's a lost cause. It's a lost cause. People support the redefinition of marriage now. So Michael, give up. It's a lost cause. That's what they told us about abortion for 49 years. It's a lost cause. Give it up. Oh, come on. It's a lost cause. And then it wasn't a lost cause. I've got some thoughts on lost causes. All right. But when you want to protect yourself when things are looking really bad, you got to check out gold. You got to check out birch gold. Right now, text Knowles to 989898. Inflation continues to bedevil our economy. The Daily Wire reports that in less than two years, inflation has soared from 1.4% to 8.6%. As of May 2022, the price of gas was up nearly 49%. Price of meat, poultry, fish up 14.2%. Price of used cars up 16%. The current administration's irresponsible spending patterns, including Biden's $1.9 trillion rescue plan, continue to exacerbate the problem. Now is not the time to have all your money tied up in the stock market. Don't let your savings wither away. Hedge against inflation with gold from Birch Gold. Right now, text Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, to 989898, and Birch Gold will send you a free info kit on protecting your savings with gold. 
Birch Gold is giving out a free gold bar with any purchase made by December 22nd, but you must submit your claim by Black Friday. With almost 20 years of experience in converting IRAs and 401ks into precious metals IRAs, Birch Gold can help you too. Don't sit around while the Fed devalues your hard-earned money. Text Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to 989898 and learn how you can convert at least part of your savings into a precious metals IRA. If you place an order by December 22nd, Birch Gold will send you a free gold bar. Text Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to 989898. One of the great Twitter people, D-E, at T.K. Dillon, made a great point. He said, you got to talk about this on the show. It's a quote from T.S. Eliot on lost causes. And T.S. Eliot writes, if we take the widest and wisest view of a cause, there is no such thing as a lost cause because there is no such thing as a gained cause. We fight for lost causes because we know that our defeat and dismay may be the preface to our successor's victory, though that victory itself will be temporary. We fight rather to keep something alive than in the expectation that anything will triumph. Of course, there's no such thing as a lost cause. We know this because when we win something, we have to fight like hell to preserve it. Because we know that that thing that we won is on the brink of decay at any given moment, on the brink of collapse. So if there are no one causes, there are no lost causes. People say, well, move on. Who cares? It's just the definition of marriage. Just the definition. That's kind of everything, isn't it? (laughs) Why won't you just give this up and move on? Because if we cannot preserve the fundamental political institution, we can't we can't conserve anything at all. And the tax thing doesn't matter. Immigration doesn't matter. I mean, kind of like nothing matters. If you fundamentally reorder your society down to that atomic level, okay, then then it's just a matter of time. Do not do that. I think even for the conservatives who say, well, who cares about marriage? I'm not with you on this one, Michael, you crazy religious people, you crazy Christians and Jews and Muslims and everybody for all, and and virtuous pagans, and everybody for all of history. I just, come on, I don't see it. Ask yourself, why don't you get it? Have a little bit of humility, perhaps, and ask yourself, why is it that statistically every single person for all of history, and 100% of the smart people for all of history, have thought that marriage means one thing until seven or so years ago, including the leftists until about 11 years ago, And now, I think that all those people were wrong. Why? Why is it? And when people say, I just don't understand the issue of marriage. Well, right, that's the problem. Then maybe have a little humility. And do not take on a stance on this issue. Do not destroy marriage until you understand why people thought the way they thought about it in the first place. It's just Chesterton's fence. Before you, you walk into the middle of a field, you see a fence. Fence appears to have no purpose. And you say, okay, I'm going to tear down that fence because I don't know what it's there for. You've got, to, you've got to take a pause and say, hold on. It is not until I figure out what it is there for that I will tear it down. Because I don't, I, I don't want to go into this thing ignorantly and potentially destroy society, which is what the people have done. Now, a little bit of good news, better news coming out of the House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi has just lost her gavel. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. Nancy Pelosi is out. I love that was a Daily Wire video of a superposition of uh, Nancy Pelosi at a bar. And everyone just, whoa, see you, Nancy. She's gone. So she's no longer going to be the Speaker of the House because she's not in the majority anymore. And she is not going to run for House Minority Leader, which means, in fact, she'll keep her seat in the House of Representatives. But Nancy Pelosi is done. She is done as a major force in American politics. She held on for a very long time. Now she is done. Now the Republicans are taking over. What are the Republicans going to do? Well, we've got an announcement from Representative James Comer, Republican from Kentucky, who says they're going to waste no time getting to investigate Hunter and Joe Biden. This is an investigation of Joe Biden the president of the United States, and why he lied to the American people about his knowledge and participation in his family's international business schemes. National security interests require the committee conduct investigation, and we will pursue all avenues, avenues that have long been ignored. Committee Republicans have uncovered evidence of federal crimes committed by and to the benefit of members of the president's family. These include conspiracy or defrauding the United States, wire fraud, 
conspiracy to commit wire fraud, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, violations of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, tax evasion, money laundering, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. The Biden family's business dealings implicate a wide range of criminality from human trafficking to potential violations of the Constitution. In the 118th Congress, this committee will evaluate the status of Joe Biden's relationship with his family's foreign partners and whether he is a president who is compromised or swayed by foreign dollars and influence. I want to be clear. This is an investigation of Joe Biden. Okay, so I like the way he frames this. He says, this is not just an investigation of Hunter Biden, who nobody really cares about, but it's an investigation of Joe Biden, right? We see on Hunter Biden's laptop, he says 10% goes to the big guy. So is Hunter just off there on his own, making a bunch of money without any knowledge of his father, trading on his father's name, getting his father to potentially make some phone calls? Or is this corruption that implicates Joe? I like it. I think it's important to investigate Hunter Biden. I think it's important to investigate Anthony Fauci. I think it's, even though Fauci now is quitting so that he hopefully doesn't get investigated, in his views, I hope he still does. We need to do all of this. However, I go back to those Moms for Liberty backed candidates at the school board. We need results, okay? Very often House panels don't do anything. There's lots and lots of investigation and it amounts to nothing. When the Democrats do it, there's the January 6th investigation that's not gonna do anything. And then there's the Benghazi investigation, didn't do very much, and on and on and on. We need results, okay? If this investigation is not going to end in Joe Biden or people very close to him in orange jumpsuits, then just don't do it. Then spend your time on other stuff. It's it's very frustrating to me that we spend a ton of money sending people to Washington, D.C. as conservatives, and they conserve basically nothing. And as we saw this week with the Republicans in the Senate, they don't, they haven't, they, they can't conserve even the basic fundamental political unit. And then we spend very little money sending women to school boards, and then they actually get things done that actually matter in Americans' lives and shape the minds of the next generation. So when I'm looking at those two things, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm not going to write as many checks to the Republicans in Congress who don't do anything anyway. And I I am going to start writing my checks to the school board candidates who are actually getting things done. We need results. You know, Cyber Week is almost upon us. And you are in luck, okay, because we have just launched the all-new Daily Wire Plus shop. Pick up something worth keeping. There is a Sweet Baby album t-shirt. There is the Johnny the Walrus book and plushie bundle. There is the Daily Wire Leftist Year's Tumblr. There's the Dog Bowl bundle and so much more. The new Daily Wire Plus shop is your chance to defund woke everything this holiday season by heading to dailywire.com slash shop today. Probably the most important things you can get in the shop, speechless, controlling words, controlling minds, my number one national best-selling book with words. And then also really important stocking stuffer for your liberal family and friends, Reasons to Vote for Democrats, a comprehensive guide, another number one national best-selling book, at least on Amazon. The uh, lists didn't want to list it, endorsed by President Donald Trump. So make sure you uh, shop there throughout Cyber Week. Also, Jeremy's razors may have started as the best joke we ever told. Now it is more real than ever in his quest to earn your business from woke companies that hate your guts. The God King turned a single glorious razor into a triumphant new line of men's products. Nourishing shampoo, conditioner, charcoal body wash, luxurious beard kit, and the new Precision 5 razor with flip back trimmer. Yes, they're all very real and very spectacular. If you're ready to get a great shave or exfoliating wash from a company that will never bow down to the woke mob, Go to jeremysrazors.com and shop the brand new line of products now. That's jeremysrazors.com today. Finally, finally, we have arrived at my favorite time of the week when I get to hear from you in the mailbag. Mailbag is sponsored by Pure Talk. Go to puretalk.com, select a plan, enter promo code Knowles to get 50% off your first month. Take it away with the voice mailbag. Hi, Michael. I... Just found out that I am uh, having a boy. I'm pregnant with my first child, and I am a hairstylist, so I've been excitedly announcing that to people. But I had an encounter today where one of my clients was less than thrilled uh, about my news, and she was telling me how 
we would have to basically untrain my son from the patriarchy and how he was going to be privileged and just born that way. And I feel like I, I didn't know what to say and I didn't really defend him. And I feel like maybe I should have, my husband said I did the right thing by not making a big encounter with Mm. someone who I'm trying to be professional with. But Um, I wondered if you had any thoughts about how to handle a situation like that if it does come up in the future. Thanks so much. Uh, I think your instinct is probably more correct than your husband's, but it depends on how the woman said it. Did the woman say, oh, you're having a boy. Oh, you know, he's going to have that patriarchy. You're going to have to train him to be a good little feminist. Hee hee hee. And then you can say, oh, hee hee hee. I think he'll be just fine. Don't worry. Hee hee hee. Tee hee hee. And you can all be laughing. If the woman was more serious about it, if the woman actually said, oh, boy, and I know people like this, oh, boy, oh, it's too bad you didn't have a girl. Boys are terrible. Ugh, you're going you're gonna to have a hard time. You're going to have to train him. I would tell her to leave my shop. This is your kid. I mean, your kid's alive, right? You're, you're, that's a real kid in there. It's not just an image of a kid. It's not just a fantasy of a kid. It's a real kid in there. This is your real son. And that's fighting words from this woman. So, I mean, you know, you'll have to use your judgment in how how this woman really means it. But if she is really insulting your son, you know, I, I try to, I try to keep it clean. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't go blue too often, but I probably would in that case. I'd probably have, have a couple words for that lady that were not happy birthday. And I, I'd at the very least tell her to leave my shop. If she's jokey jokey, then you can be jokey jokey too, but I would still be firm about it. Say, no, my kid will be just fine. Don't worry. <laughs> and he's going to grow, I'm going to train him in the patriarchy. And then he's going to grow up and he's going to put feminists like you in their place, actually, lady. <laughs> See if she laughs at that. Next question. Hi, Mr. Knowles. Thank you for being the best DW commentator out there. My question for you is, is it possible to be anywhere as a conservative and be an emotional person? Because I look at guys like you, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Andrew Clavin, and Jordan Peterson, and it seems like you guys are thinkers. You guys just have these qualities more associated with being a thinking person. Me, I base a majority of my decisions on my emotions, and I've noticed that the left likes to do that all the time, based every single decision or opinion that they have based on their emotions. So is it possible to be anywhere near the right and be an emotional person, or is the right just reserved for the thinkers? Thank you for taking the time to hear my question, and I can't wait to hear your answer. Thank you. Listen, you clearly have excellent taste in your choice of uh, podcasts and hosts, uh, but your, your question raises another question which is, what do you mean by emotional? I consider myself very emotional. I mean that. I'm not, I'm not joking. My wife might disagree. She might think of me as a block of sort of stoic obsidian that has no feeling whatsoever. But I consider myself very, I'm moved emotionally very easily by books, by films, by a butterfly floating next to a flower. Okay. I, I, I feel lots of things, but I don't allow myself to be blown away by my emotions. So I think a conservative has to be emotional. A conservative has to have a a sort of feeling with his fellow man. Uh, The left often doesn't, though the left allows themselves to be blown away by their emotions. They they often won't allow themselves to to actually have compassion with their fellow man. They say that half of the people are just awful, evil, terrible fascists, right? I mean, there's a great uh, story recounted in Whitaker Chambers' book, Witness, Back when Chambers was a communist, before he left communism, he was walking with a fellow communist and a derelict came up to him on the street and begged for some pennies or for some food. And Whitaker Chambers gave him a couple coins. And the other communist turns to him and says, you shouldn't have done that. We can't feel anything for them. It dulls the revolutionary spirit. And that Chambers obviously felt a natural kind of human feeling, right? natural human compassion. But you have to bring your emotions into line under your reason. You have to bring your your base passions and your unruly emotions into line underneath your rational will, which mediates between the appetite and the divine will. Okay, otherwise you will be just blown away on gusts of appetite and, and passion, and you won't be able to get anything done. So really, if you want to be a conservative, 
uh, if you want to be a sort of educated person, period, you, you should heighten your feeling of emotion, not just to some narrow kind of childish uh, feeling of passion, but to the whole host of human emotions, all the way up to, you know, gazing up at the sky and, and uh, you know, being moved in the way that men have been moved for millennia, all the way up to, to uh, longing for uh, the love that moves the sun and the other stars. Uh, and you need to cultivate your reason and your rational will to, uh, t- to direct those desires into their proper place. Next question. Michael, good morning. Braden here. How you doing? My question relates to Twitter. Do you think Elon Musk should give Trump his access back? For, that's my first question. Second question. If he does give Trump his access back, do you think he should do it before the midterms? My argument is no, because I don't want Trump to mess anything up. Curious your thoughts. Thanks. Obviously, I guess that voicemail bag came in last week before, before the midterm elections. Uh, yes, Elon should give Trump his Twitter back. It will be great. It will be awesome. I don't care. I'm not of the opinion that Donald Trump, he's ruining everything for the Republican Party. The Republicans are ruining everything for the Republican Party. The squishes and the losers and the, the morally vacuous, spineless jellyfish in Washington are ruining the Republican Party. Mitt Romney is ruining the Republican Party. Take his Twitter account away. I don't want Mitt Romney to have a Twitter account. I want Trump to have a Twitter account, okay? So yes, he obviously should get it back. He should get it back because when Twitter took it away from him, that was a major assault on our political system. That was a billionaire in Silicon Valley saying, or really just the sort of deputy to a a billionaire in Silicon Valley, saying that she ought to be able to control the public square, which in a self-governing republic means control the political order, much more than the people and the duly elected sitting president of the United States. So yeah, he should get his Twitter account back. Also, it will be super funny. Also, Trump is much better for the Republican Party than 99% of Republicans. Next question. Hi, Michael. My name's Will. Like you, I come from the fabulous Democratic People's Republic of New York. And like you, I've gone from the edgy atheist in my teen years to the path of Catholicism now in my mid-20s. This has brought up a question, though. As a Catholic, how do you reconcile the current Pope's views on things like supporting same-sex marriage and his apparent support of the Chinese Communist Party when he should be holding up the views of his faith? I'm still new to my church, so I don't want to go and ask these kinds of questions to anyone there because I feel like I'd be the newcomer questioning things he doesn't know anything about. Thanks for your time, love the show, and God bless you and everyone there at The Daily Wire. So thank you very much. God bless you as well. And uh, your intuition is correct. You would in this case be the newcomer who doesn't know what he's talking about because the Pope certainly does not support gay marriage. Uh, This Pope has made lots of confusing statements and I will be the first to ask questions about those statements and I have many doubts about things that he's said. But he has been crystal clear on gay marriage. In fact, when he was Cardinal of Buenos Aires, uh, Pope Francis, then, uh, then Cardinal Bergoglio, said that Gay marriage is, quote, no mere political lobby. It is a machination of the father of lies who seeks to deceive and confuse the children of God. He he was then asked later on, this was fairly recently actually, if uh, Catholics, if they obviously can't have gay marriage because it doesn't, that doesn't exist, uh, but uh, can they have blessing ceremonies for homosexual unions? And the Vatican, this is Pope Francis, said no because uh, God cannot bless sin. God blesses people who sin, namely all of us, we all sin, but God does not and cannot bless sin itself. So the, the Pope has been absolutely crystal, crystal clear on that. As for what the Pope has done with the Chinese Communist Party, uh, it, yeah, it's unfortunate. Throughout the history of the church, the uh, the sovereign pontiff has made certain deals with different governments that one hopes are in his view for the good of the church. And uh, Pope Francis has done all sorts of things in China that are dismaying and worrying. Uh, but I, I uh, that, that would be much more of a political matter, I think, than something on the, you know, 
faith and morals, which was alluded to in your first point. And that, that, that I see why you got the impression that Pope Francis is in favor of gay marriage or something, but uh, that's just because the newspapers lie, you know, because the, the newspapers always lie. So you, you definitely should not believe everything you read in the papers. Okay, uh, let's get to some written mailbag, the old school way from Jarrett. Hey, Michael, my wife, who I've been married to for three years, informed me her father has been taking hormones and believes that he is transgender for some time now. We have a 10-month-old child, and we don't feel it'd be right to cut his grandpa out of his life. However, we believe the transgender movement is possibly the biggest threat to youth in this world. I am so angry at the world's approach to this situation, as well as the people who knew this was going on. Rather than getting him help, they described, they decided affirming was the best thing to do. I want so badly to get him help, but fear he's too stubborn and too far gone to reason with. Any advice that you have, whether relating to how I approach getting him help or handling this with my own son and the possibility of having a transgender grandparent? I appreciate the time. Thank you. Awful position that you are in. You say that you think it would be wrong to deprive your child of his grandfather. Your, your child's grandfather is the one who is, dis, who is depriving the child of his grandfather. Because the grandfather is the one who is renouncing his position as a grandfather and pretending to be, I don't know, a grandmother or something else. So it's your grandfather who's doing this because he's either mentally ill or taken up in a social contagion of gender ideology or both. Either way, though, I would approach the relationship in the same way you would with any other person who is mentally ill, which is, you know, you try to get them help. You should not affirm this stuff. Uh, I, you, the way you phrase it, you say, you know, it was decided that they would affirm this. No, well, I don't know who they are, and I don't know what it was decided means, but you should not affirm this. Your wife should not affirm this. Uh, and this would be very, very confusing for your child. And uh, so I would, I would proceed with great caution, and I would uh, make it clear when you do see your grandfather, or whatever, the child's grandfather, I would make it clear that, you know, grandpa has a mental illness, and we need to treat him with pity and compassion, but this is not right. This is not right. This is not good. And even that, I don't know, exposing a child to that kind of madness, that close, could be very detrimental to the child. So I I would proceed with with great caution. And I wouldn't feel guilt about you making the decision to deprive your your son or daughter of, of, uh, of a grandfather. The grandfather made that decision, and the family that enabled that made that decision. So I'd be very, very cautious. All right, let's see. Take, uh, take one more from Brian. Greetings, Nostradamus. My question could be addressed to any of the Daily Wire hosts. As I can imagine, all of you spend countless hours pouring over the mainstream liberal media in preparation for your shows. How do you spend so much time in mainstream liberal media, yet keep your sanity? I feel confident in my conservative beliefs, yet I don't want to trap myself in an information silo. Whenever I attempt to watch liberal sources, I find myself becoming angry from the the obvious lies. How would you recommend individuals like me pursue both sides of political issues? Thank you, Brian. Oh, well, I would do so from a position of amusement and as a kind of uh, investigation and training. You know, one great thing about reading a lot of liberal press is that you learn the tricks. You learn how they do things. You know, the the most basic example would probably be when Democrats have a scandal, that's not how it's reported. When Republicans have a scandal, the headline is Republican has a scandal. When Democrats have a scandal, the headline is Republicans pounce on Democrat scandal. And I don't think as some people say, that you should spend equal time reading the conservative news and the left-wing news. I don't think that's true at all. Why would you waste so much of your time reading falsehood? I would read the true stuff, and then I would sprinkle in the liberal stuff. I do consume a decent amount of liberal media. That's my job. But I don't, I don't wa- I've never watched a full episode of The View. I watch little clips of The View. I've never watched a full episode of CNN, certainly not in the last 20 years. Uh, but I'll watch little clips of it. I'll read, you know, a column or two. I don't read the New York Times every day. I read a column or two, maybe. Uh, So I would sprinkle that in, but surround yourself with the truth. You don't need to give equal weight to truth and falsehood. That is a lie and a great error of our modern age that too many people on the right have fallen into. You don't, you can, you can pick, you can choose. As Bill Buckley pointed out very wisely in God and Man at Yale, skepticism has utility only when it leads to conviction. You know, the rest of the show starts now. We have got 
uh, really important stuff today. This is Fake Headline Friday. I have been on an absolute tear. Ben Davies is so upset because I keep guessing the fake headline. I need your help to do it. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.